In the story of Adam and Eve, did Eve have a mother? Does the answer lie in Adam's rib? Is there an answer in understanding the Aramaic translation of the word rib versus side or other half? Hmm. Could understanding these two words lead us all the way back to our own balance with the divine feminine? Well, let's start with the definition of divine feminine. The divine feminine embodies the vibration of the goddess, the ultimate life-giving motherly force, sacred, sensual, and a true nurturer. She is the personification of loving kindness. So why make a big deal of these words? What do they hold that may have some deeper answers for us? Well, in the story of Adam and Eve, the word in Aramaic that is used to describe what they take from Adam to create Eve is tzela. And in the translation to English, to other variations, they translate tzela to mean rib. But elsewhere in the Bible, the word for rib is Allah. And elsewhere in the Bible, the word tzela is used to describe the other half or the side. So the reason I bring this up is that, is it possible that Eve wasn't created from his rib, that she was actually created as his other half? And what impact would that have had on the balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine? I find it very interesting to think as a woman of myself having more of an equal understanding right from the beginning. What I know and what I have come to know is that the implications here are that the divine feminine is within us all. The divine feminine is in us all. The divine feminine shows up again in the Easter story. It's a story of Jesus rising from the dead. And the first witness is Mary Magdalene. I think there's more to that story. In the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, she talks about the relationship she has with Jesus. It's not a coincidence or a lucky timing or just a happenstance that she was there at the Easter story. She was there to see the resurrection. What if Mary was the equal partner to Jesus? What if she was the divine feminine with the divine masculine? And what if together they tell a story that bridges us between the heaven and the human? What if their story were equal from the beginning? That both understood the Christ within. That both told an ascension story. What would that change for us? What would that look like in this world? I'd be very curious. I'd be very curious to see how others would receive that and if they would acknowledge the divine feminine, not only within that story, but within us all. Hmm. One of my favorite memories when I first started coming to Unity is that they didn't just honor women who had mothered children on Mother's Day. No, they, they honored all of us. They honored everyone and they honored the mother in all of us, men and women alike. When I first heard that, I was so surprised and yet so delighted in this feeling of my own sacred feminine within, this own divine self that I could really relate to. As a woman with no children, I was deeply moved to be recognized at all. And it brought me to a place of understanding this power of mother within me. 
It felt good to acknowledge her and bring her to the table of love. And so later I was sharing this story with a friend of mine over a cup of tea. And I got to that part and I was telling her about how I felt so balanced, how it gave me back a piece of wholeness that I hadn't found before. She said, wait right there. And she got up and she went into her library and she was kind of clanging around and rustling with something. It sounded like she was taking something off the wall. And sure enough, she rounds the corner and she's holding this beautiful artist rendition. And underneath it says, the first supper. And around this beautiful big table were a diverse collection of women celebrating the divine feminine. I looked at it and I just felt absolute delight. It was a powerful picture. It celebrated something that had gone dormant within me. And it was something that elevated and brought back this much needed balance within myself. It was a reminder, she said, a reminder that you have always had a seat at the table of the divine feminine. Hmm. It made my heart smile. I thought about my heart and how for each of us, the very first heartbeat we ever hear is our mother's. And not only do we hear it and recognize it as that homing sound, that place that where we are nurtured, where we are loved, we actually synchronize our own hearts in utero to our mother's heart. I thought about that as a powerful way of connecting to my divine feminine if I would resonate in my heart and think about synchronizing the beat of my heart to the beat of Divine Mother. It's important to embody this balance. It's important to give this beautiful sacred space to our Divine Feminine. Even in unity, there is an outpicturing of this wonderful balance. We aren't started by one. We are started by two, a couple together, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. In fact, in the Daily Word, they have sometimes referred to Myrtle as the mother of unity. I think that fits. Myrtle was an amazingly empowered nurturer and healer. In fact, the mother of unity embodies the divine feminine and as a great healer, this is how Myrtle taught this message in her healing letters. She says, think of God as everywhere present light, love, peace, power, and life. Think of all men, all women, all children as abiding in God's presence and expressing God qualities. As you do this, you will touch the reality of individuals and you will invite them only the best from them. Let me say that again because I messed it up. As you do this, you will touch the reality of our individuals and you will invite only the best from them. That's it. The divine feminine helps us bring out the best in ourselves. That balance is crucial. It's important to have it and it is important to recognize that the divine feminine is within us all. So let's remember the balance of divine masculine and divine feminine begins within and it is reflected out and it's out pictured in our scripture and in our own foundation and founders in the balance of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. It is represented in 
an opportunity to look at the balance between Jesus and Mary Magdalene and what that relationship of love would have meant for us to have from the very beginning, that both had ascension messages. When we bring the balance within, it is reflected in our life. When we celebrate the power of the mother, we honor the divine feminine in all things. And finally, let's go back to that question. Did Eve have a mother? I would say yes. I would say Eve and Adam had a divine mother. It was the divine feminine in God as a co-creator and the divine feminine within them. So this Mother's Day, I invite you to sink your heart to that of the divine feminine within you. Allow yourself to honor it and restore its balance to your own wholeness. Let us take a pause And let us celebrate this Mother's Day, for the Divine Feminine is within us all. <laughs>